Don't you just hate it when you're playing through a Pokemon game and you come across a really sweet looking critter in battle only to find out that you can't actually catch it in the version of the game that you're playing? Well, with modern technology that allows for online trading and forums to communicate with other players, this isn't really a problem for modern Pokemon games anymore. You can get just about any Pokemon you want without much issue. Well, except for all of these Pokemon. Yet, as it turns out, Game Freak still finds ways to keep you from using some of the coolest and sometimes most broken Pokemon in the games. From absolutely phenomenal designs for Pokemon that were never meant to be used, used to unreleased mystery gift Pokemon, there's still some cool little dudes out there that you'll probably never get to try out. So today, let's discuss the Pokemon that you'll probably never get to use. If you enjoy this video at any point in time, be sure to leave a like and subscribe. As a matter of fact, you should really just subscribe right now because of a playlist full of content just like this that you can watch once this video ends. And if you think you're subscribed, do me a favor and double check because only like half my viewers actually are. With that, let's get into the video. So what exactly qualifies a Pokemon for this video? While there's a bunch of really cool glitch Pokemon and Chimeras that that you can make in Generation 1, these aren't actually Pokemon created by Game Freak, but rather a byproduct of the glitches found within the games, so they don't really count. And while there's plenty of shiny variants of Pokemon that are yet unreleased, these aren't cool secret Pokemon, but just some fun color variations that you can't officially use in the games yet. What we're discussing today are Pokemon that were created by Game Freak that have stats, abilities, and types, but just can't be accessed by any player during a normal playthrough of the games. They just exist within the code or are shown off to the player to tease them about a cool shiny thing that they can't actually have. And what's cooler and shinier than a brand new car? Well, five brand new cars. In Generation 9, Game Freak introduced us to the brand new Pokemon of Revaroom. Or Re Revavroom. Okay, his name's Revavroom. But the player's first exposure to this Pokemon was almost certainly during one of the five Team Star boss fights. Right when you think the Team Star boss is out of Pokemon, it turns out that giant Revavroom that they were standing on is actually part of their team itself. And each one of these special Revavroom have a special type and ability, as well as a unique stat spread. And what's crazy about the Starmobiles is that they don't actually have any base stats. All of their stats are actually just manually set. We do have their actual stats, which are way out of bounds for a regular Reverum though. The Sage in Starmobile is a dark type with the ability Intimidate, and the move Wicked Torque, an 80 base power physical dark type move which has a 10% chance to put the target to sleep. Its stats are 160 HP, 36 attack, 47 defense, 35 special attack, 38 special defense, and 129 speed. The Shader Starmobile is a fire type with the ability Speed Boost and the move Blazing Torque, an 80 base power physical fire move with a 30% chance to burn the target. That's right, this thing has physical fire type Scald, that's kinda crazy. Even crazier are its stats at 204 HP, 49 attack, 60 defense, 29 special attack, 51 special defense, and 128 speed. I should note, by the way, that the Shader and Sage and Starmobiles are fought at pretty low levels in the early game, which is likely why they have great bulk and speed, but really low offensive stats. They'd be busted otherwise. These guys might not be available to you in game right now, but what is available to you is this great deal from Factor. Recently, Factor sent me a bunch of meals and drinks to try out for the sponsorship, and believe me when I say these are some high quality meals. They arrived in this package that kept them cool and ready to be transferred to my fridge, where at any point I could throw them in the microwave for two minutes and enjoy a fresh, never frozen meal. As a full-time content creator, I spend a lot of my day writing and editing videos, so these delicious meal kits have not only been convenient, but they've even helped me stick to my health goals, as many of the meals I've tried were high protein. Factor isn't just delicious, but it's cheaper than takeout and faster than cooking, so you can save money while you treat yourself. You can choose from a weekly menu of 35 options, including popular options like Calorie Smart, Keto, Protein Plus, or Vegan and Veggie. Also discover more than 60 add-ons every week, like breakfast, on-the-go lunch, snacks, and beverages to help you stay fueled and feel good all day long. What are you waiting for? Head to Factor75.com or click the link below and use code MOXIE to get 50% off your first Factor box and 20% off your next month of orders. That's code MOXIE at Factor75.com to get 50% off your first box plus 20% off your next month's orders. Thank you to Factor for sponsoring this video. The Navi Starmobile is a poison type with the ability Toxic Debris and the move Noxious Torque, a 100 base power physical poison move with a 30% chance to poison the target. Its stats are 252 HP, 60 attack, 80 defense, 50 special attack, 70 special defense, and 130 speed. The Rookba Starmobile is a fairy type Pokemon with the ability Misty Surge and the move Magical Torque, a 100 base power physical fairy move with a 30% chance to confuse the target. Its stats are 380 HP, 90 attack, 120 defense, 70 special attack, 90 special defense, and 132 speed. And finally, the Calf Starmobile is a fighting type Pokemon with the ability Stamina and the move Combat Torque, a 100 base power physical
physical fighting move which has a 30% chance to paralyze the target. Its stats are 408 HP, 95 attack, 120 defense, 80 special attack, 85 special defense, and 131 speed. Obviously since these Pokemon have custom set stats meant to make them a challenging fight in the early game, it's difficult to determine exactly what their base stats would be, but if we assume that they have 0 EVs in each of them, we can determine that the Rook Boss Starmobile, which is fought at level 50 exactly, would have the base stats of 305 HP, 70 attack, 100 defense, 50 special attack, 70 special defense, and 102 speed. Now, I know that doesn't sound terribly impressive, on the offensive front at least, but when you keep in mind that it has bulk like this and moves that can burn, poison, or paralyze the target, as well as a variant which has Intimidate, these would make some pretty killer support Pokemon if they are ever released into the games. But it's pretty unlikely that we'll ever actually have access to these beauties in the general public. Yeah, but I can still dream. And if you think that these Pokemon's bulk is impressive, wait till you get a load of Eternamax Eternatus. A Pokemon so cool that it has a special secret third version of Dynamax. Now, normally, Eternatus can't Dynamax in-game. If it could, then maybe it would actually have been decent. But Game Freak may have been saving us from an even worse fate as Eternamax Eternatus has an absolutely ridiculous stat spread of 255 HP, 115 attack, 250 defense, 125 special attack, 250 special defense, and 130 speed. You might be wondering, Mr. Boosted, how high are these stats really? Well, let me tell you something really, really cool. Eternamax Eternatus' defense stats are so high that it's possible to literally invest too many EVs into them. At level 100, if you give it a defense or special defense boosting nature and give it any more than 240 EVs into said defensive stat, it overflows and becomes a stat of one. What happens if you do 240 EVs exactly? Well, it becomes zero, which messes with the damage calculation and causes Eternatus to only take one damage from any attack. This is effectively the best possible defense stat, zero. Go figure. You see, where in Generation 7, Pokemon experimented with actual boss battles like that of Ultra Necrozma, they were limited in difficulty as these Pokemon would eventually have to be available for online battles and it would throw off game balance if they were overtuned. So come Generation 8, Game Freak decided it'd be best to just create a Pokemon which is never intended to be usable by the player under any conditions. Thus, we got the demonic hand descending from the sky. The closest thing we have to actually getting to use this thing is by clicking Eterna Beam on regular Eternatus, since the animation causes it to briefly Eternamax. Though this is only a visual change and its stats don't actually get any higher. One day I'll get my hands on this guy. One day. And on that day, Wochan's stall tactics will never be looked down upon again. I'll be a god. Okay, so have you ever heard of Pokestar Studios? Have you called a plumber to your home lately? How superstitious are you? How much money would it take to make you spend a night in a cemetery? Neither have I. I had to look up a lot about this thing just to get info on this video. Well, this was a fun little mini game in Generation 5, where the player would create films by going through different scenarios and battling against green screen squares on a green screen set. This mini game had some exclusive Pokemon in it which would only be visible upon switching to the film that the player made, not actually being available in the battle that you record prior. These special Pokemon would replace that green square that you're hitting. But despite these Pokemon not actually being real, Game Freak for some reason saw it fit to give them all base stats, types, and abilities. Now all their base stats are just 100 across the board, since they don't really matter, but what I'm scratching my head at is the point of giving them types and abilities if they were never meant to be used. Funny enough, there are some quote Pokemon which are just straight up dudes. So if you ever wondered if the Black Belt Trainer class would be a fighting type, well we have a definitive answer for that now. Yes, they are a pure fighting type and their ability is huge power. Now I'm not going to say that this would be broken, but 100 base stats across the board with a passively doubled attack stat would be well broken. Oh and if you ever wondered what type of the gym leader Bryce would be, he's Dark Psychic. You know, despite being the ice type gym leader and his abilities levitate. We also have Monica, the pure normal type giant woman who has the ability huge power. Once again, a hypothetically busted Pokemon, though I don't think anyone's begging Game Freak to add these designs to the games. Now, there's also some props like the black and white doors and the transporter, but these are all pretty boring. Let's get to the crazy ones. Humanoid is a pure normal type with the ability Insomnia. I'm not sure why it's a normal type, because it's frankly the least normal dude I've ever seen in my life, and I go to Pokemon tournaments, so I've seen some stuff. 
And insomnia is a great ability for it because trust me, after looking at this guy, I don't think I'll be able to sleep tonight. Obviously this guy wouldn't be terribly strong because we have better options than a normal type blob that can't be put to sleep. Though it does have access to the move explosion, which would be a pretty cool niche for it if it ever existed in PvP. MT, which is supposedly short for Mega Tyranitar, is a, well, Mega Tyranitar. I know he looks like Iron Thorns, but that dude just stole his whole flow bar for bar. This guy came first. As a pure steel type with the ability analytic and access to only the moves Earthquake, Iron Head, Spark, and Surf, it manages to look really cool despite only having exactly one move set. What, did you expect Game Freak to give this guy more than four moves? Ungrateful loser, if you wanted another move set, you could have used MT2. This guy comes with four different moves in Dragon Pulse. Flamethrower, Metal Burst, and Thunderbolt. It's also a Steel Electric type. We're getting dangerously close to just making Iron Thorns, aren't we? And if you're not satisfied with four moves for Pokemon, well, look, now you get two. Monster, very creative name, I know, is a pure Dark type with the ability Pressure and the moves Dark Pulse and Confusion. You know, it's kind of crazy that this wouldn't even be the worst Dark type Pokemon if it existed. Sorry, Mighty Anna. Not satisfied with naming just one Pokemon with an acronym, Game Freak saw fit to make UFO a flying electric type with the ability levitate. Hey look, Rotom fan, they made you a friend. This one is arguably among the weakest as it has access to only the moves Bubble Beam, Counter, Recover, and Signal Beam. It doesn't even have access to any electric or flying moves, so no stab for this guy. Not satisfied with naming just one Pokemon with an acronym in the number two, Game Freak saw it fit to make UFO 2, a psychic electric type with the ability levitate. Once again, this Pokemon lacks any stab moves, but at least its attacks are far stronger than UFO. It's got Dark Pulse, Flamethrower, Hyper Beam, and Ice Beam. Honestly, not terrible all things considered. Throw this dude in Gen 1 and he'd probably be OU. Did I save the coolest Pokestar Studios Pokemon for last? Yes. Yes, I did. Majin is conceptually broken. Where every other Pokemon from this minigame has some kind of shortcoming, Majin makes up for its shortcomings with its type and ability combination. You see, in Generation 5, we didn't yet have access to the Fairy type, so the combination of Dark and Ghost would cause a Pokemon to have no weaknesses. Which is fine as they would typically reserve this typing for a Pokemon which lacks great stats or any recovery options, such as Sableye or Spiritomb. But Majin here has the ability Wonder Guard. Wonder Guard causes the user to be completely immune to any attack which deals direct damage and isn't super effective. So as a dark ghost type with Wonder Guard, Majin would effectively be invulnerable to all direct attacks, effectively like a reverse magic guard. And with a moveset of Crunch, Dual Chop, Slack Off, and Swords Dance, I have no doubts this thing would be banned to or even from Ubers if it were ever released. This thing can set up hit most Pokemon for neutral damage, and recover any damage it takes from Stealth Rocks or Poison with the move Slack Off. And it's got a killer design. Like, I wouldn't mind if this dude was eventually the inspiration for a Pokemon in a later generation. Sort of like with Iron Thorns and MT2. I don't know, I just really rock with this dude. Like, I might try to fit him into the channel branding. He's that cool. Unofficial channel mascot Majin. Our final Pokemon, which Pokemon players will probably never get access to, is Eternal Floet. During the story of Pokemon X and Y, you find out that the character AZ had a Floet which abandoned him long in the past. This Floet had a really sweet design which had the flower resemble the weapon that AZ created. Through data mining, players found out that this Pokemon actually did exist within the code and had its own stats and a cool custom move, though it would never be distributed. This Pokemon was a pure fairy type with stats much higher than a normal Floet, with 74 HP, 65 attack, 67 defense, 125 special attack, 128 special defense, and 92 speed, all amounting to a base stat total of 551, which is just one point lower than Florges, the fully evolved form of the Flabebe line. This Floet also had an exclusive move in the move Light of Ruin. This was a one 140 base power special fairy move which caused the user to take 50% of the damage that they dealt in recoil. This is actually a pretty interesting move conceptually as it has no equivalent move in any type today. It's pretty rare that a special attack has any recoil damage. And the few which do have recoil damage like Mind Blown and Steel Beam just deal a flat 50% of the user's HP and damage to itself. I'm uncertain if Eternal Floet would be categorized as a mythical or not, but if it were hypothetically legal in the official competitive Pokemon format of VGC, I could see it actually being a pretty decent special attacker that could reasonably run like a choice specs and just clean up games with its absolute nuke of a signature move. And hey, with Pokemon Legend ZA coming out just around the corner, there's a second chance for players to possibly be given access to such an interesting unreleased Pokemon. While some of these Pokemon are a little bit more easy to conceive being brought to the main series of games as actually usable Pokemon, I think it's pretty interesting to see just how Game Freak decided to design Pokemon 
Pokemon which were never intended for the players to use. But who knows, maybe some of these, Majin, please let it be Majin, will eventually become available. But what do you think about these Pokemon? Would you want any of them to be available to players in future games? Let me know in the comment section below, and let me know what topic I should cover next. Also, while you're down there, make up a fake Pokemon to discuss that people who didn't finish the video will get confused about. Like, isn't it crazy how Glorbis had access to Dark-type Draco Meteor and Contrary? Whoa, who let that through playtesting? If you enjoyed, be sure to leave a like and subscribe. It'd mean the world to me. If you want to support me further, you can check out my Patreon page or become a YouTube channel member by clicking the join button below the video. This gets you sneak peeks at future videos and even some bonus content. You'll also see your name at the end of my videos like all these lovely people. Special thanks to my most boosted supporters, Avatar67, Adoc V, Halo, Invisibleish, Jordan Harridge, Pika Power, Kayla Thompson, and Rager Lance for their generous pledges. Another way to support me is to check out all the videos in the playlist on screen right now. I know you'll find something in there that you'll enjoy. I also have a second channel where I talk about the current VGC metagame trends and a Twitch channel where I stream, both of which will be in the description below. Thank you all for watching and I'll see you in the next video. Bye.